Hi, I'm David Sober. I'm one of the technical marketing engineers supporting Cisco UCS management and management software. Today I'll be giving an overview of the Intersight API. I'll start by looking at the Intersight Essentials Edition, which enables the Intersight RESTful API. From the main Intersight dashboard, I see an overview of new changes that have come into Intersight recently. These changes include the enablement of Intersight Essentials Edition and the Intersight RESTful API. Some of the features in the Intersight API I will show are enabled through the Intersight Essentials Edition. And to check that, I will navigate to the license page and see what my current licensing tier is. Essentials can be activated on a trial basis for 90 days, or you can register with a Cisco Smart account and on this page, I see that I have an active essential subscription with three servers that was last updated on January 21st. For more help on the Intersight RESTful API, I can navigate to intersight.com help. And at the bottom of the page, I've got a link to the API documentation. This will take me into an online API documentation help page. Intersight provides comprehensive online API documentation. These online API docs allow me to search for common actions. Here I can search for user and I pull up a set of user related resources. If I expand the IAM slash user resource, I see the typical operations I can perform for get, post, delete, and if I click Get, I can further expand the possible options, command line options that can go into any API call. These are OData-based filter and query options. And I can also interact live with my Intersight account on the right-hand side. And in this case, I can go perform a Get of users, and I get a response with all the appropriate user data. The online docs provide a great way to see an overview of everything that is there, but for remote API use, we will need to generate remote API keys. To generate a new API key, I will navigate to my profile menu and click generate API keys. From there, I can type in the name of the key and then click add, and for this user, I will get a public and private key pair. The private key pair, this is the only place that this is generated. This needs to be kept in a secure location, much like private SSH keys or keys for other remote APIs. The public key will be visible and can be managed from within the Intersight account. So I will save the secret key. And when I'm back at the API key management page, I see the description of the key when it was created and that remote API key. The settings page can also be used to manage API keys and I can see the user who has created the keys, the public API key ID, and I can delete or otherwise modify these keys on this page. There are quite a few resources to manage and interact with in Intersight. The API docs provide a great overview of those, including the detailed specifications from them. Another powerful tool to use is the Browser's Developers Console. In this case, I'm using a Chrome browser, and I can navigate directly into my Developer Console by right-clicking and clicking the Inspect menu item. That brings up my Developer Console. From there, if I click the Network tab, I'll be able to see all interactions between the Intersight UI and the API backend. Everything in Intersight is API based, so I can see all API traffic, and I can use that to form a framework for remote API calls that I'll go into in a moment. An operation to perform in terms of user management is to go in and add users by cisco.com ID and role. While I have the developer console up, I will go in and add a user. And on the right hand side, as I perform that operation, I see the corresponding API calls into the back end. 
walking through a delete operation, I can reverse the process, still look at the developer console for what is needed in terms of querying for a user and the appropriate role, and then performing delete operations against that permissions resource and the user's resource to effectively delete a user. Once I've gotten a feel for how the API operates, I can take that into higher level scripting languages such as Python, github.com slash Cisco UCS slash Python has the Intersight Python SDK, contains installation instructions, the full API in Python, and some example usage. Here I'll walk through one of the example scripts to add a user which builds upon what I walked through in the developer console. The script, much like what I saw in the developer console, performs the operations to get some basic data on the resources needed to create a user, posts to the user's object, goes and gets additional data associated with roles and endpoint roles, and uses that for a final post back into the permissions object. What the Python scripting allows me to do is have some basic data driven into the script, such as my cisco.com user ID and the desired role of account administrator or read only. I can also use my remote API keys and private key to interact with the API. Those are saved away in this example. And finally, I can run this Python script provide those inputs of user ID and role, and Python will interact with the API for my account and add this user. Taking a quick look back at Intersight, I see that my user, SoperSpam1 in this example, has been added with read-only permissions. There's also an example script for deleting user, examples for claiming and deleting devices, and many more to come, all built on the API. Thank you for the time. Please visit the following websites for more information.